Hi, my name is Carlos Ferreira, and this is an overview of a Maximo Node.js Getting Started application, uh, which is the app that is included in the tutorial that allows you to get familiar with the Maximo REST APIs, as well as the Maximo Node.js SDK that uses those REST APIs. The application is a web application which is, uses Node.js and X, the Express framework to connect to um, a Maximo database. So one of the things you're going to have to do to get your local development environment set up is to get a copy of the Maximo Docker container. Or if you already have a Maximo environment, you can just connect to that. Um, the other thing you need to do is actually clone this repository to get the completed code, which is the Node.js Getting Started web app. And then of course you need a browser uh, to connect to everything. So that's, that, that's really the first step. To get your access to the container, you want to contact Harry Najmarurathi. Uh, this is his mail to address. Um, you also want to install Git. And then as I mentioned, Node.js for Express. You can also use Postman to test the REST APIs. Uh, I'll actually show you how you can do that. Um, now, I'm gonna go through the use cases around creating asset queries, as well as reading an asset detail once you pick which asset you wanna look at in that query, and then creating an asset as well, all within maximum. So let, let's take a look. There are some uh, reference documents that are included here uh, that allow you to look at other use cases as well as other business objects. The primary business object that we're gonna be looking at is the asset. So uh, these are the instructions for setting up the Maximo con Docker container once you have access to that from Harry. Uh, you wanna log into that um, given the token that he'll provide you. You want to do a Docker pull request uh, for that. And um, once you have that locally, then you want to CD into that um, folder that you created. And then you want to um, look for a Docker called Docker, a file called docker-compose.yml. And then you want to do the Docker command to start your image, um, docker compose-f docker-compose.yml space up. Um, once, once it's up and running, what you'll have is something that should look like this. It's a correlation started, and this means that your Maximo installation, uh, which are your REST API endpoint database, which is based on DB2 for Maximo, is up and running. And you will now go into the next step, which is to um, run your Node.js web getting started application, which is this application. You want to git clone this uh, from this GitHub repo. Um, you want to do a CD into the directory that where you've downloaded this file, and you want to do an npm install, which will install dependencies that are inside of package.json. Once once that's installed, the Node.js SDK for Maximo that allows you to use JavaScript is called IBM-Maximo-API. So you want to make sure that you also install that. Uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll be using some requests to call using authentication in the browser. Uh, and so you want to also install the cookie parser as well. Uh, and then also install the express sessions as well. Once, once you've installed basically all these dependencies, you can then say npm start. And what that will do is it will start your um, Node.js server. Now, what that another way to start it is to instead use what they call um, Nodemon, which allows you to save and make changes to your um, 
Node.js application, which is inside of your server.js, it automatically detects file system changes to the code files, and then it restarts the Node.js uh, server right away. So if, if you, can, you can actually use these instructions instead. So we're going to go ahead and start it up. And what this is going to do is it'll start um, the application, and then it'll tell you the URL that it's actually running in. So in this case, it's running on localhost on port 3000. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. We'll open up a, a new tab. We'll make it, and then we can actually just paste in here. So one of the things you see right away in this tutorial app is it has a form for creating assets and uh, it uses Ajax. And then it also has an area here for displaying asset details, which will show the details of our query. And that, that's the middle area here. This is basically a query of all the public assets um, that in, exist inside of the Maximo database up to 100. So we'll get into that. Um, so that's the first thing that we're going to show you how to do and go through the code is see how you can actually query the Maximo database and get access to assets and look at the location cost and asset ID. And then what you, we, we can also do is, is then you can get the asset details by clicking on these links, which will invoke them using Ajax and get the values of it. So when we click on this now, you can see here, you're trying to go to the asset. So it's actually showing you the URL that it's using to get more in terms of REST API um, to get more information about that asset. You click OK, and it shows here the data that it's retrieving, and the Ajax actually populates it into our uh, table on the bottom here with the asset details. So this was the Dal term one, and, um, and so you can see th that. So we can come over here to this one, and what it's basically doing, it's doing Ajax to get the details of each of the different assets inside of here. So that's, that's how you actually um, can actually get asset details for each of the different assets when you query. And then the, the third area that we're going to look at is actually creating assets. And I'm first going to do this by creating an asset uh, that already exists. So we're going to create an asset that already exists, and it should give us an error message. And IBM. And to submit on the form, you want to hit here, return. And this will actually return. And so this is saying, look, you already have a record with asset 1234 that exists. Uh, so it's a validation error. So that's. Um, trying to create an asset and now we're going to do it again but this time we're going to use a unique identifier so this time we're going to provide valid entries for an asset that doesn't yet exist yet you hit return so here you can see it created asset with ID 4330 and um, if we go over here to the, the log files, you can actually see that it's created an asset with ID 4330. So there's 4330, create asset. And uh, this is the JSON structure that got created. So those are the three uh, use cases that this application um, does.